Welcome friends to The Mind of Steel. This is the weekly show that explores the wacky world of just one man. His name is Mark Steele, and he's often referred to as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. And, and that's a, a very tall accolade, because Britain has some wacky, wacky people. But why focus on Mark? Mark isn't the most successful conspiracy theorist. That would probably be someone like David Icke or RFK Jr. And Mark isn't even particularly wealthy. From what we can tell, he doesn't seem to do a particularly good job uh, of making money from his ludicrous grift. Uh, and Mark doesn't even have the best story. In fact, anybody can tell that Mark is an absolute liar. He, he's, he's just not very convincing at the conspiracy theories he tries to sell. So why do I focus on Mark? Well, it's really a combination of all of those things. Mark is the omni-conspiracy theorist. He tries something and, and it fails, and then he tries something else. And it's interesting to watch Mark, not because he's good, but because he's just so transparent. Take, for example, today's little uh, examination into the life of Mark Steele. Mark has a plan, an another plan. A and guess what? This time, he's got a way to shut down 5G. This time, he's really going to do it. And unlike all the other times when it didn't work and his plans came to absolutely nothing, this time, he's got the goods. We now have a way to get the 5G removed, okay? There's been a high court decision, right, stating that they must carry out the health impact analysis. Now, so wherever you've got a 5G mast, right, it has to be removed, okay? It has to be. Mark seems to be very certain of success this time. Every single mast in the UK, if it's compatible with the 5G network, it has to be removed. But how is he going to do that? That's an audacious plan. One man from Gateshead versus the telephone industry. So, so what's so wrong with these masts? Why is it that they have to be removed? Obviously, there's some structural integrity issues in relation to the monopoles. Obviously, they're uninsurable if they fall over on the traffic. We've seen a few. There was one on the coast road actually came over, and there's quite a lot of them setting themselves on fire. Okay. As far as I'm aware, these cell stations don't just burst into flames. Somebody has to burn them. And in the early days of the, the 5G Truther movement, there were a bunch of people who, some of whom were Mark Steele's fans, who would set fire to these cell stations. The way they would do it was... They would take super soaker water pistols full of petrol and they would squirt lit petrol up at, uh, at these cell towers. That, that's a really dangerous flamethrower because you've just got a plastic toy full of an explosive liquid. If this carries on, I, I'm sure someone is going to hurt themselves quite badly. Not that Mark Steele seems to care. So is that Mark's plan to end 5G? Just have more of these cell towers set on fire? Let's get back to the fix. Freedom information request, use what do they know? Did you carry out an environmental impact analysis, right, for that mast? Mark's brilliant idea is that we should all make freedom of information requests about 5G via the What Do They Know website. And that's an amazing service. It allows any citizen to ask a question of the British government and subject to the Freedom of Information Act, they're obliged to answer. So if a government record exists, you can ask to see it. On the face of it, Mark's request doesn't seem so absurd. It's just some of the details he seems to get wrong. Right. First and foremost, FOI for the health and safety and environmental impact analysis. Then the indemnity, the insurance from whoever is uh, the operator of that equipment, right? And the council, and the wattage, and the output, and the timing of the amount of radiation, so we can see if that actually fits with the uh, guideline, which I can tell you now it doesn't. So th Mark and his friends have completely misunderstood what a freedom of information request is. It's not like the, the magic mirror mirror on the wall to which you can ask any question and get an answer. It, it's, it's a much more simple, direct thing than that. If a government record exists and it's not protected by some kind of privilege, 
and it's not some kind of secret national security information, then under those circumstances, the government is usually required to share that record with the, with the person who's asking. But the government isn't required to create a record if they don't have it. And if you're asking the wrong person, well, you're just not going to get a response at all. So if Mark is asking Gateshead Council for whether they've done a, a, an environmental health impact of every, every single cell transmitter that's installed, well, he's asking the wrong person. That's not the council's job. Uh, and all these questions about the specifications, the, the transmission power levels of a transmitter, well, that's a question for the manufacturer. And you could probably find the answer on the manufacturer's data sheets on their website. But Mark doesn't know how to read that because he's not a technical person. Right. Once you get the FYI back, we then file a letter before claim. They ain't got a leg to stand on, by the way. We'll get those documents ready, right? And we need somebody on benefits, in rented accommodation, to file that. That bit doesn't make any sense either. Why should the person who makes the Freedom of Information request be on benefits in rented accommodation? Anybody can make a Freedom of Information request. I could make a Freedom of Information request about 5G in Gateshead Council, even though I don't live in Gateshead. Or maybe he means the person who sends the letter before action. Oh, that makes just as little sense. Perhaps he's talking about the person who is bringing in an eventual kind of action, but that also makes no sense because theoretically, if you've been harmed by a thing, it doesn't matter if you're a pensioner or you live in rented accommodation, you've still been harmed by it. It's just an indication that Mark is speaking without thinking. He really doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't understand the technology. He doesn't understand the risks of radiation. And, and he doesn't understand the law. He has absolutely no idea. This is all play acting. And then let's just see what happens there. And if they don't respond, we'll then see them in the court and we will get an injunction, right, for them to have it removed immediately, right? Because what they haven't done is done what the law said. What do you it sounds simple. You do this freedom of information request and you wait till the council replies saying they haven't done a health impact analysis and then you take them to court. E except that this video was made one year ago and judging by the fact that Mark has not brought that lawsuit and in fact didn't even make the freedom of information request, well, that's proof that this was nonsense. And I know that because the thing about using write to them is that every request and every response is public. I can search write to them and I can see all of the requests that Mark Steele has made. Well, he didn't even make a request that was consistent with what he's suggesting should have been done way back in 2022. But the requests he did make were nuts. They were asking the wrong people for crazy things. You can't ask for a record if that government department doesn't have that record. And Mark doesn't really have any kind of clue how government works because contrary to what he claims in public, he's never worked for the Ministry of Defence. He doesn't know anything about the subjects he's talking about. Further, we've got one at the top of Lobby Hill. I need somebody to get an FY in on that one. I've got another couple in Wickham. They need FYs in. Everybody needs to start getting freedom of information requests in to ask for the environmental impact analysis. And when your council come back with a complete load of bullshit and say they're not responsible, we've got them. We've got them! Except, of course, we haven't. They didn't. He didn't. It wasn't. None of this stuff ever happened. It was all a fever dream. A, a wacky work of imagination by the great man Mark Steele. None of this stuff happened. But Mark just wants to see the world burn, and in particular, the 5G transmitters of the world. He will be encouraging his friends to continue setting fire and to vandalise the 5G communications infrastructure. And even more urgently, he'd like to see a few individuals shut down. Do you know when I point the finger and I go, well, there's a troll there, or there's another troll there. I'm going to tell you now, you talk about the elites not being able to walk on the streets. 
well you absolutely won't be able to and it is coming like a train this is what you get when you bear false witness testimony it's been another wacky zany wild ride into the world of the mind of steel what have we learned today well number one we've learned about mark Steele's zany legal strategy to shut down 5g forever he wants us to find pensioners and people on benefits to make freedom of information requests and then he wants to sue the council or somebody because each individual 5g transmitter doesn't have a health and safety impact analysis a thing that only mark Steele thinks the 5g transmitter actually needs to have but what else have we learned well yes we've learned that mark wants vengeance against anybody who criticizes him and he's almost certain he's going to get it. Let's hope Mark is wrong about that because I want to be here in a week's time to give you another episode of Mind of Steel. And I'm sure I'll find some bizarre aspect of the great man to reveal and share with you.